Lamborghini, my grandson's favorite sports car. I grew up in the 70s, so I love muscle cars, especially a Shelby Mustang. And a Cobra, that was a machine to die for. What a beautiful car. However, before we can get today's supercars, we need to see where it all came from. This is the Nora Grist Mill in Helen, Georgia. Why are we here? A mill was one of the first machines to convert water power from a horizontal circular motion to a vertical circular motion. Why is this important? Well, it's the use of gears and power converted to work. And these have been used for centuries. Fast forward, the first real engines were steam. By 1712, Thomas Newcomen had created a steam engine that could transmit continuous power. Both of these early designs were primarily used to pump water from mines. The Newcomen engine was significantly more powerful and replaced a team of 500 horses that had been used to pump water out of a mine. It would take decades, however, for these machines to be considerably improved. Within 200 years, steam pumps became relatively smaller and were pulled behind horses and used by fire departments. This is my great-grandpapa. His name was Frederick Edward Anton Schilling. They called him Fritz. He was born in Hamburg, Germany in 1849 and came to America and settled in Marietta, Georgia with family friends. He was trained in steamworks, furnaces, and heating. In 1879, when Marietta purchased their first steam engine, the Aurora for the fire department, the mayor turned it over to Fritz since he was the only one that knew how to run it. He meticulously maintained fire engine number one. Previously, men had to carry water in buckets hand-to-hand -to, -hand to put out a fire, or they had to provide the manpower to push the handles on a water pump. The fire department kept it and has had it completely restored to the same condition it was handed off to my great-grandpapa in 1879. First steam engine converted steam into power to push the piston and pump the water out of the hose for the firemen. The Aurora was in service for 42 years until 1921 when it was replaced with the American La France Pumper, engine number two. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. In 1812, steam engines had been improved and the power again converted to push a piston. The resulting horizontal power, like the grist mill, was turned to circular motion, but this time it was to power the first locomotive engine for the Middleton Railway in England. The 1800s saw an explosion of railroad tracks crisscrossing Europe and the United States. By the mid-1800s, steam power had come full circle. Rather than water turning a wheel for grinding, now the steam engine turned a wheel to paddle water or a water pump. The first real steam vehicle was built as early as 1770, known as the French Cugnut. However, all attempts to build a car that early were disastrously huge. Most roads were not built to withstand the enormous weight, and they were highly inefficient. Finally, we get to the name that's synonymous with steam, Stanley Steamers. No, not the carpet cleaning company. In 1896, identical twins Francis E. Stanley and Freeland O. Stanley from Kingsland, Maine determined that they could create an automobile and have it ready for the next year's fall fair in Brockton, Massachusetts. In order to get the performance they wanted, they set their goal that the car would weigh no more than 500 pounds. They designed a lightweight fire tube boiler capable of withstanding 200 pounds, yet weighing only 90 pounds. They purchased the 35-pound two-cylinder engine from J.W. Penny & Sons of Mechanic Falls, Maine. In the first year, they developed and built three cars, two runabouts and a Surrey. However, they dismantled the Surrey and kept the two runabouts that would later be called the first Stanley Steamers. They were constantly turning down offers to buy them. However, one would-be buyer, a Bostonian named Matho, 
was more persistent than the rest and eventually persuaded F.O. Stanley to part with his car for the outrageously high price of $600. F.O. knew full well that he could build a better car, and he did build himself a replacement runabout. On November 8, 1898, they were the late entry into a steam car race at Charles River Cycle Track, which is now the location of MIT in Boston, Massachusetts. The race was in connection with New England's first motor show and the Stanley Steamer outran and outperformed all their competitors. The records they set were so convincing that within two weeks they were inundated with orders for over 200 cars. Due to health reasons, F.O. Stanley moved to Colorado and built the first resort hotel designed specifically around the automobile. He eventually built a larger vehicle to transport guests around the property. F.E., on the other hand, in 1903, threw himself fully into the development of the automobile design. In 1906, he designed a steam car called the Beetle, or Woggle Bug. It was a streamlined car for racing. They took it to Ormond in Daytona Beach, Florida. They set a land speed record of 127 miles per hour on January 27, 1906. In a second attempt, what they did not anticipate and wouldn't be considered for decades was the aerodynamics of the, the air going underneath the vehicle. Now cars are designed with that in mind in wind tunnels. Number one. There you go. Unfortunately, the car got to 150 miles per hour and it became an airfoil, and the front wheels of the car bucked off the ground. The car was smashed to pieces, and Mr. Marriott, the driver, was seriously injured. F.E. would never race his car again. Fred Marriott, the driver, he had traveled faster than any other man before this time. Daytona was the salt flats of the south. Also, it was believed that an incident on the sand would be a bit more forgiving than on a hard clay or gravel road. I mean, we're right here at the north turn where the cars will literally turn from the beach, cross over and get back on the highway and run south down A1A about a mile, right. and they'd reach the other turn. Huge banks, but yeah, you just see cars laid out everywhere. It just, I think today's drivers can't even imagine what it would be like to take their equipment out. I hope you've enjoyed this quick history of development of the engine and even a quick idea where the first Daytona auto race began. Until next time, keep all four wheels on the road.